the first link in our chain of life. Green plants, as well as cyanobacteria and certain types of algae, are able to harness the energy of the sun, converting it to food energy in the form of sugary compounds. We call these organisms producers, and this is where our food chain begins. The Everglades are full of producers, from sawgrass to mangroves. One very important producer is a slimy goo called paraphyton. Paraphyton is complicated stuff, but it's basically a mixture of different types of algae. It can be found covering the limestone floor and many of the submerged plants of the Everglades. The second link of our food chain is occupied by what we call a primary consumer. This is an herbivore, or a plant eater. For our chain, we'll use the mosquito larva. In its larval form, the mosquito is an aquatic herbivore, swimming around munching on organic matter. It loves paraphyton. The gambusia, on the other hand, loves mosquito larvae. This is why we also call him the mosquito fish. We'll stick him in the third link of our food chain. The gambusia is what we call a secondary consumer. Secondary consumers are animals that eat primary consumers. Because the gambusia mostly eats other animals, he can be classified as a carnivore. The great blue heron is a fish eater. He has a dagger-like bill designed for spearing and snatching swimming prey. The heron is able to nab some pretty big fish, but the gambusia makes a nice appetizer. Because he mostly eats secondary consumers, this makes the great blue heron a tertiary consumer and gives him a spot on our fourth link. Now for the big guy. The American alligator is a formidable beast. As a fully grown adult, he's way at the top of the food chain. He's what we call a top predator also known as an apex predator. For the gator, an unobservant great blue heron would be gourmet dining. This guy is aware of the danger. Time to go sunbathe elsewhere.